Welcome back. Quick plane talk tonight. I was working with this number six Bailey patent plane, and it's time that uh, it's time that we do a quick sharpening video on how I sharpen between any sort of major uh, blade reshaping. So you loosen that up. Slide it back, give it a twist, you leave your chip breaker right on top of the iron. No need to take it off, it, it actually acts as a little bit more of a handhold. Now, this iron has been honed and sharpened probably half a dozen times. I have a little bit of a pit right there that's going to be in the cutting edge right soon. Then I've got a whole series of pits over here. And so I'm not sure if I want to waste three-eighths of an inch of the blade and grind past it to where there is no pit, work through it, live with it. I don't know yet. I'm, I'm, I'm just not certain. Flattening this blade is out of the question because it would require taking off so much metal that the blade would be too thin. So it's 120 years old. I would rather use it if I can and live with it or I'm going to put a replacement blade in there. Now, I will not put a replacement chip breaker in. The chip breaker, there's nothing wrong with it. I will leave that intact as long as it's still fitted and working properly because the chip breaker is an integral part of your plane. Blades are replaceable. Chip breakers, you should try to take good care of your chip breakers because they're part of your plane. Now, if I were reshaping this, there are many different ways to do it, and I, I really don't want to get into the discussion on whether or not one abrasive method is better than the other because I've tried them all. I hate a lot of them. I like a lot of them. But uh, there's also the cost factor. Diamonds ended up, in my mathematical equations, costing less per year to use. Um, I don't think they're as fast, and this lapping fluid is not cheap. So oftentimes I'll go between sessions and I'll just use them dry. So if, if you're going to reshape your bevel, make yourself some wedges. I have a 25 and I have a 30. So if you put this down and you put your blade on top of it and you find out where that, where that sits, you just have to get a feel for it. You find out where that is actually sitting, right there. Now you lock your hand in and everything else and now you've got the 25 degree. You lock that all in. So that's where you'd be rubbing more of the, the bevel and the, the back part of the bevel and the center. If you're doing fine honing, and if I had any sort of damage to the blade right now, I would go to the 1000. And I'd take my 30, set it up, come in, come down, lock my arm in that position, and there's my 30. Okay, so since I don't have any damage and all I'm doing is a quick honing, I go to my 4000 and like I say, I'm doing this dry right now. I come in, I bring the bevel up and I feel for that, that angle and it's 30 degrees more or less. And usually you can tell if there's nothing here to catch, I don't know if you can see that, if you were to take your fingernail, your fingernail should skate right over and up onto the blade, so there's nothing, nothing there to catch. That's the angle, and then you raise it just a little, and there you go. You just go straight back and forth with even pressure. Now some people say, well, you're not going perfectly straight, you're in an arc and everything else. Uh, yeah, that's, that's true. So now you, you hold that, you don't let go, 
and you check for your burr. No burr, you come back down, you find that, that angle, raise it up a little bit, and there you go, back and forth. So like I say, if you're reshaping, you can see I'm starting to get dust there, metal dust, and that means I got a burr. Now, people who want to religiously go back to the ruler trick, that's fine. What I do is I come back flat. I make a pass or two, and then using these two fingers, I slide it in underneath the back. I'm flat, right now I'm flat. I go back and forth, and then I push those fingers in and it raises the blade a fraction. One, two, three, and the burr is gone. I'll show you that again. I'm sharpening this way. Back and forth. You get your burr. Get rid of the burr. Some people will go like this and just pull straight back. Others will go back and forth like this. Put the ruler underneath there. What I just find convenient, and this is the way I was taught 46 years ago, you just press down, go back and forth, flat a little bit, and then squeeze the blade, and it lifts it ever so slightly. And so the burr is gone, and you've got a nice polished edge. Loosen your screw back up. Bring it down. I like to go about a sixteenth of an inch or so. You'll know if you're too fine. The plane will fight you. It'll, it'll jam up, it'll curl up. The plane will fight you. And then you use your uh, chip breaker screw screwdriver, which is the lever cap. Yes, the lever cap police will come after me. They'll toss me in lever cap jail. I have a nice Lee Nielsen lever cap screw screwdriver, but it doesn't fit the Stanleys. Reinstall. Lock it down. Do your sighting. I have to remember this plane has the opposite threads to your typical modern day plane. It's counterclockwise to advance. And there we go. So that's really all there is in sharpening in between major grindings. And uh, yeah, I know. Okay, that's a piece of pine. Let's take a piece of tulip popper. It's a little bit harder. Okay. So, I encourage you to develop your own quick honing method and do it often during the day. Any slight hesitation on the plane, if putting a little bit of oil or lubricant on the bottom, whether it's oil or whether it's uh, candle wax, I, I don't really care what you use. Just don't use anything with silicone in it. There we go. But do yourself a favor and Keep a sharp edge. It just makes your day go so much better. If you have any questions on sharpening, uh, if you're really in a jam, something just doesn't seem right, write me a message. Con you know, connect with me. I'll help you where I can. But uh, I'll just say this in closing. The Bailey Patent Plane, and I've said this in other videos, is perhaps the most brilliant 
plain design ever for the general purpose of, of planing wood. Are there finer? Yeah, there's, there's some infill planes that are absolutely magnificent. But for the general production of wood products where you have to plane wood, this concept where it's the sum of all the parts that makes it work. That thickness blade is perfectly fine. I have never had chatter. I do not know what chatter is. The only thing I'm thinking is when you have a dry sole and you have really dry wood that you get that resistance and there's a vibration that happens within the whole plane but it's not from the blade. I mean, it, it's just not. It's, it's not from the blade. It's from friction. I don't know what chatter is. I've used blades thinner than this. This one's a little thin, but I've used thinner. And uh, we'll see how many more sharpenings I can get out of this blade before I get into that, that pit on the back. But as you can see, 120 year old, still working good. Well, I hope that helps you. This is Walter, over and out.